Okay. Through the magic of Hollywood, I've go ahead and gone ahead and added some more text to this document. I figure watching me type is pretty boring, so I won't subject you to that. I want to go through a couple of things, um, some more keyboard shortcuts that might be kind of handy and might be sort of useful. Um, first of all, this isn't a, a keyboard shortcut, but it can make your life pretty easy. If you double click on a word, it will select that word. This can be handy for a number of things. Um, it saves a little bit of time and say you wanted to make this bold rather than trying to fiddle with getting the cursor in the right spot and maybe, you know, adjusting the table instead, you can just double click on the word and highlight it and it makes life very easy. I remembered something I wanted to talk to you guys about that you may or may not be aware of. Uh, that's undoing something. So suppose you went in and accidentally deleted this line and you wanted it back. You can press Control Z or Command Z to undo that change. So say you wanted to make a whole bunch of changes, remove that, make this underlined, make this bold, make this bold, and you thought, well, I'm not really crazy about any of those. You can undo all of those and you can go up to the edit menu to see the other undo options. So if we hit that, it'll go back one and then we can keep pressing command or control Z depending on your system to go back and undo all of those changes. Say we decide in the end that we really did like them, we can do control or command Y to put them back. Again, that is undo is control Z or command Z. And redo is control Y or command Y. I also want to talk to you about uh, cut, copy, and paste. I realize I forgot to mention that uh, earlier. So you're probably completely familiar with this. So if you highlight a word and press Control or Command C, it will copy that word. And then you can press Control or Command V to paste that word. You can click on the edit menu to see these options, but unfortunately, if you click on them, you get this window and it says they are unavailable via the edit menu. Now that's browser specific. Uh, I've noticed this behavior in Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. I can't say about Internet Explorer. I think in the future that they will be available. However, this does give you a nice little uh, rundown of the shortcut keys to access those. And this is on a Mac, of course, the command symbol. If you're on a PC, that would be control. So I can, I'll go ahead and show you if you do command X, that'll cut, control V or command V, and that'll paste. So again, control or command X to cut, control or command C to copy, and control or command V to paste. Uh, one other thing that I like to talk about is as double clicking selects a word, triple clicking selects a line. That can be pretty handy if say you want to triple click and drag, you can select a lot of text all at once. And then of course once you've selected it all, you can modify it as we showed earlier. Now say you want to make this bold, that's as easy as highlighting the word and clicking this button, and that makes it bold. The keyboard shortcut is Control B or Command B. Now that's that's handy for adding emphasis, creating headers, that sort of thing. Now here the text says to select your preferred office hour time you should underline your top five choices up to three may be selected as preferred times by placing a, an asterisk next to it so how would you do that so if you double click and i might have to fix this so you can select these as a word and you can see the reason it's not working on this one is because there is a space right here so say we select this one and we want to underline it. We can click this, the underline button, and it will be underlined. And of course the shortcut key for that is Control U or Command U. Very handy again for adding emphasis. Something else that's kind of handy, suppose that I wanted to let you guys know in this document that while well, this time is no longer available but it was originally, I can go ahead and make that strike, strike through like this. That is not that common but it's still it's handy to know how to do it and that's Shift-Alt-5. 
Okay, one other thing I want to talk about are superscript and subscript. Now these are handy if you're writing a scientific paper or if you want to do citations or something like that, or if you want to show footnotes. They, they can be very handy and it's good to know they exist, not necessarily to always remember it since you can always go to the shortcut command window and look them up. But I wanted to show you this is superscript and you get there by pressing command period or control period. And subscript looks like this. Also handy for footnotes or formatting scientific notation, that sort of thing. One thing to note that if you're trying to apply multiple formats, say you go subscript and then you remembered, oh wait, I wanted it to be superscript, it will automatically switch it over to that one. Now one thing that's sort of interesting, you can combine some of these but not all of them. So say you want it to be bold, underlined, and subscripted, you can do that. Now there, you may have noticed there is an undo formatting command. Now unfortunately, or fortunately, depending, that does not undo superscript and subscript. And this is also a good spot to mention that uh, as double clicking a word will highlight it, if you triple click on a line, it selects the entire line. I'm having a little bit of trouble, hang on. There we go. Now to demonstrate how the undo formatting works, I'm just going to go ahead and press the shortcut key, which would be control backslash on a PC and is command backslash on a Mac. And you can see it removes the bold and the underline but not the superscript or subscript. One other thing to note, if you have multiple words highlighted with different formatting, if you go to undo one of them, rather than undoing it, it will apply that style to everything. But then if you do that shortcut key again, it will put it back to normal. All right, now I wanted to talk about downloading these documents in different formats. This uh, Google Docs allows you to download things in these formats, Microsoft Word, Open Document, that's an uh, open source uh, word processing format, Rich Text Format, which is also an open source format, PDF, which I'm sure you're all familiar with, Plain Text, and as a web page. Now, these two or this one and this one will typically get rid of some of your formatting. Rich text is nice because it's basically plain text, but it allows things like font decoration and things like that. You may not ever have to worry about those, but it's just sort of nice to know what they are. Now for this, I want to demonstrate downloading it as a PDF because that will also let us experiment with uploading something as a PDF. So in Safari, I have it set up to automatically download a file to a particular directory. Your browser may be set up differently. We'll talk about download locations in another video. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and click on PDF document, and that will download it, as you can see right here, and Safari automatically opens the file. So I'm going to go ahead and close this, and then exit this document. Now, as you may remember, to close a tab, you can press Control w or Command w I'm going to use the X, however, just to sort of be more transparent. I'm going to click that, and that closes the document. And in case you're worried about uh, any of your changes having been lost, we can click on this and see that they are still there. I also have an earlier one from when I was uh, recording this previously, which we're actually going to go ahead and remove that one, and this is another handy thing to see. If you click this checkbox, it gives you some more options. You can move it to a different folder, you can remove it, or you can preview it. Now what preview does is it opens it up in sort of a, a preview window like this, and it allows you to go through all of your documents kind of quickly. That's a new feature to Google Docs, and it's pretty handy. So for now, we're just going to go ahead and remove this and I want to show you uploading a PDF file. So we're going to go Upload, Files, and this takes us right to the folder where I'm saving it, but that's because I've navigated there before. You may have to navigate around to find it. I'm going to pick the PDF that I just downloaded and choose that, and then it gives me my upload settings because if you remember, I have the Confirm settings before each upload checkbox selected. 
Now here I have convert text from PDF and image files to Google Documents. This is pretty handy if you're given a PDF and you want to get text out of it or if you want to change it and then save it as a PDF later. So we're going to go ahead and hit start upload and then that gives you this window and you can see it goes pretty fast and it says converted and everything's great. Now the easy way to tell which one you just uploaded since the name is the same and maybe I should have changed that is by looking at the last modified time. So since we know it's this one we're going to click on that and that will open it up. Now suppose we want to change the name that's as easy as clicking up here and we're going to change this to example document 03. Click OK. Now the way this works you might be thinking hey I wanted the text I can't edit it what's up with that. Um, well, it imports the PDF as an image, because that's essentially what a PDF is, but then underneath you have the text, and down here you can actually modify it if you want. Now one thing to make note of, and one of the reasons why I wanted to show this to you, is here we have this nice table. When we import a PDF, the table tends to go away. That's just um, a problem with how it handles the import. So it's just something to be aware of if you're wanting to import, say, like a scientific document or, you know, something with a lot of tables and a lot of figures. It might not work as you expect. Right. So I think that's about it for this. I'm going to go ahead and close this document, and I think that'll about do it.